Hi guys and welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we have more than one hour or approximately one hour. I try as much as I can to cover all electricity questions in the recent exam paper 2021, 17, 18, 19 and 16 as well. So please pay attention and do not forget to share and like and subscribe. And please have a look at the this question. Copper wire radius which is 0 0.40 milli uh, meter so this is the radius let me write them down so this is which is 0 0.40 times the 10 power by minus 3 meter the electric current here which is 5.1 ampere and the examiner is asking for drifting velocities unknown and the number of the charges per cubic meter it's 8.5 times the 10 powered by 28. Now, there is one lovely equation is linking all of these, which is I equals N, Q, A, and V. So V equals I divided by N, Q, and A. Okay, so to be in safe side, honestly, we need to calculate the area uh, separately so cross section area is pi r square so it's pi times r square the area with the radius is 0 0.4 10 power by minus 3 and this one is square use your calculator my friend so the value for the cross section area is 5.0 times a 10 power by minus 7 meter square now we're ready to get the velocity the electric current which is 5.1 from the given okay divided by n which is 8.5 times a 10 power by 28 times the value of the q the electric charge itself here we have electrons okay do not forget this which is already given in the formula sheet 1.6 10 power by minus 19 times the value of the uh, a the cross-sectional area we already calculated 5.0 times the 10 power by minus 7 okay for the velocity just mathematical calculation Please do not forget to write the unit. It's a velocity, meter second of minus one. Your A level students do not write meter per second. It's meter second minus one. Then the answer is 7.5 times a 10 power by minus four. This is the drifting velocity, 10 power by minus four. Your answer already now is given in the two significant figure. Do not forget this. The examiner give most of these numbers in uh, two significant figures. You will get two marks. And please do not forget to share and like, subscribe. Keep watching the video to the end. In this question, the diagram shows a combination of three resistors of resistance X and Y and Z. The total resistance here of the combination, this is RT. We have two resistors, Y and Z connected in parallel. So now I need to get the RP for parallel connection. There is one formula, which is one over RP equals one over Y plus one over Z. So one over RP equals YZ in the denominator as a common factor divided by y to get z plus and yz divided by z you will get y times one which is y so rp reciprocal uh, make it upside down which is yz divided by z plus y the summation of these two resistors which is yz plus divided by z plus y. Uh, now, this um, two resistors, or the combination of these two resistors, uh, connected in series with Rx. The final step is to get the total resistance, Rt, x plus Rp. R total equals x plus yz over z plus 
Y. The correct answer for question two is C. You have to pay attention, my friend, all my students, please pay attention for this one. This, uh, there is a different question here. The examiner is asking to calculate the value for the voltmeter reading. Okay, we have two marks. I prefer if we have two resistors, simple electric circuits connected in parallel, there is one technique. Use ratio. If you want to add these two resistors and you get R total, and from R total, you need to calculate that then use I equals V over R total. Then you multiply the I, uh, what you get the I total here, times the value of this resistor to get the voltage across the 12. And then you get the voltage across 55. It's okay. Up to you. It makes sense and it's easy. No problem, use this way. But I prefer for me, because the exam timing, uh, some students, um, they need, they, the, the most important is to get the two marks. Okay, so I need the voltage. Okay, so let me say it's a V1, which I need, this is the voltage, divided by the V total. Then equals R1 divided by R total. The voltage V1, it's unknown, divided by the total voltage from the electric cell, which is 1.5 equals R155. It's not needed to make any conversion. Divided by the total resistor here, which is 55 plus 12. So 55 divided by 67 and then you do cross multiplication now. So V1, which is the voltage uh, across the 55 kilo ohm, it is 1.5 times 55 divided by 67. So here, do not forget to write the unit voltage or volt, sorry, then use a calculator. So the correct answer here, which is 1.5 two three three significant figures you get two marks for this one one mark for the correct answer with the unit and one mark for showing the ratio and by calculation so you get two marks please pay attention this is not an easy section the student set up the circuit and observes that the reading of the voltmeter now is lower so there is a drop here in the value of the voltage, or there is a value of the voltage across the 55 kilo ohm is slightly less than the value calculated in the previous section. So the examiner is asking, could you explain two reasons for the lower voltmeter reading? Okay. So first of all, I have to look at the other component, what I have in the electric circuits, there is an epsilon, which is the electromotor force here, equals the voltage, which is across the 12 kilo ohm, and plus the voltage across the 55 kilo ohm. But the examiner noticed that there is a kind of a drop in the value of this voltage. So there is um, kind of a mis mis uh, miscalculation, maybe, or practically something happened. So I'm asking my students, what do you think? There is something hidden here we did not add in our calculation. Maybe this electric cell or the battery itself has a small internal resistance. We did not include the internal resistance in our calculation. It's a very small uh, internal resistor. So there is a voltage across this internal resistance as well. So I'm going to change the color here. And I would say there is a small voltage across the internal resistor. So the answer is the cell has internal resistance. Okay, I will get one mark for this. Then there is a potential difference across 
this internal resistance. So now I get like kind of an explanation and with the reason and the one mark for each correct reason and one mark for the explanation. Uh, we still have other factors. We have to think. Uh, guys, this is a kind of a schematic diagrams. So you have to uh, think about the practical if you did this one with your physics teacher uh, during uh, the uh, teaching the Ohm's law concepts. We sometimes we use longer cables. So these cables, let me choose different color here. These wires, sometimes they're very long. So definitely they have resistance as well. So let me remove this one and draw here. This is the resistance, not fuse. Okay, guys, this is not fuse. There's a resistance of these, the long wires. Okay, and there is definitely, sorry, Definitely, there is a voltage across these wires. Okay, I would say VR or V, may, may do it like V wires. Okay, so I would say there are there is a resistance in the wires or in the cable or in connection. And there is a voltage, or I would say there is a potential difference across these wires, okay? And this is the reason you get one mark and one mark for one reason, one mark for the correct uh, reason, and one mark for the explanation. So I think I got four marks now. In this question, honestly, I love this question. Quite easy, but some students, they are not happy. Okay, let me highlight the keyword. Firstly, we have metal cube. I help you, and sorry, I'm not good at drawing. This is the metal cube. The examiner said what? Sides of length X. So I have X and X and X. Connected in the circuit, the current through the cube between the opposite faces and is I potential difference is V. There is, he's asking for resistivity of the metal. No problem at all. I just said L here, which is X, because this is the length of the metal cube or the, as a metal wire, the cross-sectional area, which is X squared, the area of the cube. The equation of resistance, which is R equal rho L over A. Let me rearrange the equation. So rho equals, for resistivity, it's R A over L. So rho equals R X squared for the cross-sectional area divided by X for the length. Then cancel out the square with the X. So rho equals Rx. But the point is, when I look at the choices, I have voltage and current. Okay, no problem. So rho equals, and instead of writing R, what is resistance from Ohm's law? It's V over I, no issue, times X. So rho now as resistivity, it's a Vx over I. The correct answer is A. In this question, we have two resistors, 5 and 5 ohms, connected in series and parallel. Let me solve the total resistance, which is in series R1 plus R2. So 5 plus 5 equals 10 ohm. For the parallel connection, there is one equation, R parallel. So R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So 5 times 5 divided by 5 plus 5, 25 divided by 10, which is 2.5 ohm. One secret 
in the series and parallel connection before ending the this section if we have two equivalent or two equal resistors connected in parallel so the submission is going to be double five and five ten if we have two resistors connected in parallel like five and five in parallel it means the sum must be two options less than the least in case of they are different but if they are equal so it must be halved so five and five the half which is 2.5 the correct answer for this question, which is D. 10 ohm for series, 2.5 for parallel. In this question, showing uh, how the current varies with the potential difference, and the examiner gives us a lovely keyword, which is an ohmic conductor. Any relation between voltage and current is a directly proportional especially with the temperature is constant so when you divide v over i the gradient must be constant resistance or if you want to uh, make it i divided by v is going to be like one over r and also this one must be constant as well because the temperature is constant and the constant gradient as a mathematical skill in the relation between I and V, it must be shown as a straight line, not curved line. So the correct answer for question seven, it is A. In this question five, there is one lovely formula, which is I equals N Q V. N A, and this formula or relationship, there is a linking between the value of the electric current I, and the N and Q and V and A. He, the examiner, is informing that the students that the temperature of a metallic conductor increases. When the temperature increases, you have to know that one thing is really important. The resistance of this metallic co uh, conductor increases as well. And as a result, this one will change the value of the electric current, which the value of the electric current is going to be less. But I have to look at these um, factors or parameters in this equation. The point is not the N or the Q or A. The point is the drift in velocity uh, of the electric charges passing through the metallic conductor is going to change and definitely is going to be or is going to be is going to decrease as well. So there is a decrease in the value of the electric, uh, you can say the drifting velocity here of the uh, electrons through the wire. So the correct answer for question five is C. Question four, this circuit has a cell and this cell has epsilon, which is the electromotor force. And there is an internal resistance here, R. And there is a, an external resistor, R capital. The examiner is asking for the terminal potential difference across the cell. It means the voltage across the capital R. So you have to know that epsilon is the total electromotive force or the total energy transferred by the power supply or by the electric cell per unit of charge equals the voltage which is the external and do not forget there is a some voltage or dropping in the voltage across the internal resistance as well which is v r small i need to get the value of v the capital or the voltage across the external resistor so v r capital or v equals epsilon minus v r small let me figure out that v equals 
epsilon minus. There is an electric current left the positive terminal and passes through the external resistor and continues flowing from the positive to the negative terminal and reaching the small internal resistance. I times R. This is the voltage across the small internal resistor. So this is the formula. I can use it to calculate the potential difference across the cell. So the correct answer is D. For this question, the examiner is asking the unit of the charge is coulomb, and you know the simple of the electric charge is Q, which of the following is equivalent to coulomb. Q equals I, the electric current, times T, the time. The unit of the current is A, ampere, and times the time, which is second. So the correct answer, question one, is A. Question two. In the combination shown below, each resistor has a resistance 6 ohm. So this one, let me label 6 ohm, 6 ohm, and 6 ohm. Two, they are in parallel, and they are connected with the 6 ohm on the, le at the left side in series. Which of the following is the total resistance between X and Y? So let me say this is R1. This is R2, this is R3. For the R parallel first, which is R2, R3, divided by R2 plus R3. So 6 times 6 divided by 6 plus 6, 36 divided by 12, it gives us 3.0 ohm. If we have any two, it equal resistors connected in parallel so the sum of these two resistors must be halved then rp is connected in series with r1 so rp plus r1 will give us the r total so rp is 3 ohm plus r1 which is 6 ohm equals 3 plus 6 9 ohm so the total resistance is C, 9 ohm. In this question, there is a battery which is, um, has an EMF 1.5, and this is the symbol which is epsilon. So the electromotive force, which is 1.5, and it's already connected to the torch bulb. This is the lamp or the bulb. And there is a potential difference across this lamp, which is 1.5 or 1.2, sorry, voltage or volt. The current in the electric circuit, which is 280 milliampere. The examiner is asking to calculate the internal resistance, which is R small of the torch battery. Okay, so there is a formula here, which is epsilon electromotive force is the voltage across the lamp and plus the voltage across the internal resistance. Make it simple, my friend. So the voltage across the internal resistance, which is epsilon minus the voltage across the lamp. So for step one is 1.5 minus 1.2 and the voltage across the internal resistance is going to be 0 0.3 volt. For this step, you will get one mark. Then, the internal resistance, I need the R small. R small. So R small equals the voltage of the internal resistance divided by the electric current. So the voltage is 0 0.30 divided by the value of the electric current is 280 milliampere so 280 times 10 minus 3 so after that it's 1.07 ohm 1.07 ohm now i get one mark for the final correct answer with the unit and one mark for showing the calculation of the internal resistance by the substitution. And let me highlight these marks. 
so this is the first one and this is the second one and this is the third one now for section b to calculate the power transferred by the torch uh, bulb or lamp so i have the voltage across the lamp which is 1.2 v and the electric current which is 280 milliampere the formula for the power across or the the power in the lamp or transferred by the lamp which is i v the electric current which is 280 times the 10 minus 3 times 1.2 and for the power right now uh, in the lamp or transferred by the torch bulb which is 0 0.336 watts there are two other ways to calculate the power as well using the formula p equals i square r but you have to show how much the resistance of the lamp and for p equals v square over r and for this formula as well you have to show how to calculate the resistance to get three or two out of two in this question i get one mark for the substitution and one mark for the final correct answer with the unit in this question we have two ways to answer the the question or to find or to calculate the power dissipated and the 60 ohm resistor these two resistors 50 and 62 they are connected in series and there is a total uh, voltage here or epsilon or electromotive force is 9 volt if i want to calculate the power dissipated power equals v square over r or i square r so these are two equations you can use them to calculate the power dissipated in the 60 ohm i'm going to use i square r but i don't have the value of the electric current no worries because it is electric circuit i equals the total voltage divided by the total resistance so the 9 volt divided by these two resistors connected in series so it's r1 50 plus r2 62 so 9 divided by 112 it will give us 0 0.080 ampere i think i will get one mark here out of three then step two show the examiner that you know the electric current is how much 0 0.080 ampere then the resistance that you want to get the power dissipated in it which is 62 ohm the formula for the power it's i square r now you try to use or to show the examiner you know the equation you know the symbols you know the values and finally power equals i square r again 0 0.080 square only for the current times the value which is 62 the resistance the correct answer 0 0.40 what i will get one mark for the final correct answer with the substitution and one mark for the use of p equal i square r and showing the value of the electric current and the value of resistance b the 57 ohm resistor is connected in parallel with the 62 ohm resistor 57 62 they are connected in series with the 50 ohm they are connected in series with the 50 ohm so the examiner asking to calculate the total resistance of the circuit step one i need to calculate the r parallel which is let me say this is r1 this is r2 this is r3 so r1 times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 
62 times 57 divided by 62 plus 57. Definitely the answer for these two resistors connected in parallel must be less than the least, less than 57. Use your calculator, the answer is 29.7 ohm. So these two resistors equivalent to a resistor which is 29.7 ohm. This one must be connected, still in connection with the 50 ohm. So now we have uh, like a new electric circuit made of the sum of 62 and 57 as 29.7. And in addition, we have 50 ohm in series with the 29.7. So R total equals the R parallel from the previous step plus R3. 29.7 plus 50 ohm, you will get 79.7 ohm. 79.7 ohm. One mark for the correct answer with the unit. And one mark for showing the sum or the calculation of the parallel electric circuit or the two resistors connected in parallel. Okay. And one mark for the calculation or the submission of 29.7 plus 50. And this question is asking for a graph shows how the resistance R of a filament lamp, this is the key word today, varies with the temperature theta in degrees Celsius. Okay, definitely if the temperature theta increases, so the resistance of the filament lamp increases due to collision between the flow of the charges or the electric current and the letter signs of the resistance. So there is a kind of the increasing temperature and increasing of resistance of the filament lamp. The, the answer definitely it's B, but why we have a resistance when the temperature is zero? Because you cannot ignore the presence of the electrons of the filament lamp themselves. There is a resistance even when the temperature it is zero. So this relation, it's impossible to start from the origin. There is a value for the resistance of the filament lamp at zero temperature. The correct answer is B. In this question, there is a diode. It's connected in series with resistor R. And Definitely, they have the same value of the electric current. We cannot ignore this. There is one keyword is given here. The potential difference across the diode is 0 0.7. So 0 0.7, this is the voltage across the diode. So the voltage, if the examiner is asking the resistance itself, how much? The resistance R equals to the voltage divided by the value of the electric current. So easy to get the voltage now, which is the total voltage 3 minus 0 0.7, the voltage across the diode. The point is, how much of the electric current? Examiner is a nice man, give us the value of the electric current. Just to check the graph, zoom in. The voltage here, which is 0 0.7, and across the diode. You just, you draw a vertical dotted line. I tried to find the point. It is approximately between 16 and 18. If you check the choices, all of the choices, it is 18 milliampere. Just draw a horizontal dotted line. So here it is 18. And remember, this is milliampere. Okay, go back to our equation, which is the value of the current is 18 milliampere, it is 10 minus 3. So the resistance is 3 minus 0 0.7 for voltage divided by. If you want to write it is 1.8 times 10 power by minus 2, which is same 
So the correct answer, question, uh, let me check, question seven, it is C. In this question, we have epsilon. And epsilon is what? Is the total energy per unit charge supplied by the cell. And there is an uh, electric current, I, and this electric current uh, in the electric circuit or the series electric circuit, so the voltage across the R capital, so it's I, electric current, times R according to Ohm's law. So this is the voltage across this resistance. The same electric current continues flowing from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal of the cell it itself. So there is a voltage here across the internal resistance, which is I times R. This is a small voltage across the internal resistance. In physics here, epsilon equals to the voltage across external resistance and plus the voltage across the internal resistance. Here in the question, the examiner is in, informing us the terminal potential difference of the cell, of the voltage across the external resistance, which is V equals epsilon minus VR, which is the small internal resistance. So after rearranging the equation or substituting that V equals epsilon minus I R. So the correct answer for question four, definitely it's A. In this question, I should know the efficiency of the cell. So the efficiency is coming from the useful output divided by the total input. So the useful here, which is the voltage across the external uh, resistance, so let me say it is I times R divided by the total input. So the total input is coming from the EMF, the electromotive force. So IR divided by epsilon. Correct right. answer for question 5, it is P. What is the SI unit for current? So current is the flow of electric charges or the rate of the flow of the electric charges. It is measured in ampere. And the formula linking the I, which is electric current, is the flow of charges, simple to buy Q, divided by the T, which is the time. The unit of electric current is one ampere. And the unit of the electric charge, which is 1c column divided by one second okay for rearranging this one this is going to be the column per second or you can write column second minus one so the correct answer is b so this is resistance one resistance two and resistance three the examiner is asking to calculate the total resistance of this combination so firstly i need to solve r2 and r3 these are connected in parallel so the combination of the two resistors r2 and three so i would say this is r parallel equals to r2 r3 divided by r2 plus r3 and 22 times 620 divided by 22 plus 620 equals 21.2 ohm so r2 and r3 the the equivalent resistance which is only one resistance so 21.2 ohm the 21.2 is already connected to r1 which is 47 ohm they are in series now so the r total equals the submission of 47 which is r1 plus 21.2 total resistance for R2 and R3. So 47 uh, plus 21.2, the correct answer is uh, 68.2 ohm. Make sure that the submission, it gives us the three significant figures. Thank you guys, three marks.
Technician uses the length of constant wire to make a resistor of resistance R 6 ohm and the wire has a diameter 0 0.23 millimeter. This is the D. The length of the wire is unknown. You have the resistivity which is rho. There is one equation linking the resistance and resistivity, the length and the cross-sectional area. The examiner is asking for the length. So we need to rearrange the equation. So it is R times A divided by rho. The problem is we don't have the value of the, the cross-sectional area or the uh, yeah which is a so the formula is pi r square pi times r square it means the 0 0.23 this is diameter divided by 2 and times 10 minus 3 from millimeter to meter and do not forget this one is square the cross-sectional area right now it's a 4.15 times 10 minus 8 meter square this is the value of the cross-sectional area you can stop the video and you can do it slowly take it easy my friend the length right now is r which is 6.0 ohm times the cross-sectional area 4.15 times the 10 minus 18 divided by the rho which is 4.9 times 10 minus 7 easy to get the cross-sectional area now which is 0 0.51 meter and please do not forget to write here with the unit you already get three marks one mark for the use in the equation and one mark for showing the cross-sectional area and one mark for the final correct answer with the unit in this question there is circuit shown and we have 12 volt 19 milliampere 500 ohm 300 ohm and r which is a resistor connected in parallel with 300 the examiner is asking for the potential difference which is v voltage but only across the 500 ohm like imagine that we have a voltmeter and connected in parallel across the 500 ohm there is one given here which is the total main electric current here is 19 milliampere the 19 at the other side as well it's 19 milliampere which is coming from the positive terminal and it is the same value is gonna go to the nine the, the other side which is the negative terminal so the formula for voltage it's i R. this one is ohm's law the value of the current is 90 milliampere so times 10 minus 3 times the value of resistance which is 500 so the correct answer for this one it's 9.5 v please write them down here uh, one mark for showing the calculation and use of v equal i r and one mark for showing the correct answer with the unit to calculate the resistance R, to get the four marks, remember that in section A, we already calculate the voltage across 500 ohm was 9.5 volt. Voltage across R because 300 and R, they connected in parallel. The V total minus the voltage across the 500 ohm. So V total, which is 12 minus 9.5. So the voltage across R which is 2.5 ohm i think i deserve one mark right now have only the electric current which is i total 19 milliampere i have the voltage across r which is 2.5 and the same voltage across the 300 which also the 2.5 volt so there is one thing here we call it at this point is a junction so this uh, like let me say this is current one and the electric current two so in parallel the electric current is splitting but the voltage across 300 and r same so there is one thing here is easy to you can uh, apply the formula to calculate i1 which is voltage divided by r voltage which is 2.5 divided by the value of the resistance which is 300 and for this one the correct answer is going to be 8.3 times the 10 power by minus 3 
ampere. This is the value of the electric current in the branch of the 300 ohm. This is I1. I think we deserve one mark here. Clear the electric current uh, I2, which passes through the resistance R. So I total minus I1. 19 times 10 minus 3 minus 8.3 10 minus 3. So the correct answer for this one is 10.7 10 minus 3 ampere. I think we deserve one mark for this step. Click the resistance R now. This is the final step. Is the voltage is already known from two more steps, previous two steps, divided by the electric current, which is I2. 0.5 divided by 10.7, 10 minus 3. So the answer for this one is 234 ohm. 234 ohm. Final step, and we get the last mic. In this question, which of the following graphs uh, of potential difference V against current I correctly shows the behavior of filament lamp? In Ohm's law, R equals V over I. You have to know that one thing, if you want to get a constant resistance here in this question, which is according to this relation, so it's going to be a straight line. This in case of having uh, a, a resistor. If for Ohm's law, one of the requirements is uh, when the temperature is constant. Unfortunately, in the filament lamp, the, due to the interaction or collisions between the flow of electrons or the electric current and the lattice structure of the filament tungsten wire in of the lamp, so as a result of the resistance increases and due to the increase in uh, temperature, in, the reason of increasing the temperature is the collision between the flow of electric current or flow of electrons and the lattice structure. As a result, the resistance increases, so the correct answer is C. The potential difference is 600 millivolts is applied across the circuit component. What is energy transferred when the charge of two columns flows through the component? There is one formula for calculating. The energy W is V times the Q. Voltage here, which is 600 millivolt, change it into volt, which is 10 power by minus 3 times the amount of charges is 2 coulomb. So it's 1,200 times 10 power by minus 3. Just cancel out the zeros, so we get the 1.2 joule. The correct answer is D. Hi. For question 7, rechargeable cell carries the marking 150 milliamps hours. What charge does this correspond to? So the Q equals I for the current times the T. I, which is 150 milliamps, which is 10 power by minus 3 times the time taken, which is hours, 60 by 60. Okay, use your calculator. You cancel out the zeros without calculator as well, which is two zeros here and one zero. Cancel out the 10 power by minus 3, which is 15 times 6 times 6. Okay, 15, which is 5 times 3, and times 6 times 6 equals... 6 times 5, which is 30, and times 3, and times 6, which is 90, times 6, overall, which is 540, and call them the correct answer, which is B. Uh, the question is, um, which of the following SI units of is equivalent to the volt? Volt, it's, there is one formula, which is W over Q, for the energy transferred per uh, unit of charge. So the unit for energy is J and the Q is column. So the correct answer, which is J per column, is C. For ampere, which is I over R, which is not the Ohm's law, which is incorrect definitely, column per second, which is I equals Q over T. And for D, J per second, work over time, which is Power. So the correct answer is C. Everyone, we have October 2022.
the current at the point of this of a, at the point in a circuit at 1.25 ampere which of the following expression gives the number of electrons or simple the by e passing the the point in 45 seconds there is a formula linking the i equals q over t the amount of charges passing through the wire in a, at a point and in unit time but this amount it means the number of the charges times the e the value of the charge divided by the t i'm asking for the number so the number equals uh, by the cross multiplication so it's i times the t over e so i'm looking for the multiplication of the current and the time divided by the value of the charge which is 1.6 times 10 power by minus 19 so in the denominator i'm targeting the this one which is the 1.6 times 10 power by minus 19. so this one it it means that the current is 1.25 and the 45 seconds with it which is the time taken and the value of the charge 1.6 times 10 power by negative 19 so the correct answer October is October 2022 when the temperature of the metal wire increases the resistance of the wire increases which of the following explains the increase in resistance as you see there is a directly proportional between the temperature and resistance so let me describe what's meant by temperature temperature is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy and there is a formula for this which is 3 over 2 kb delta t this one is the boltzmann constant the kb the delta t is the change in the temperature so once we have increase in temperature that it means in physics average kinetic energy of the particles resistance is how much opposes the electric current the resistance increases here because we have um, kind of collisions between the lattice ions and the free electrons or the flow of, ele of electrons or of the electric current. Okay, so there is a directly proportional definitely between the temperature and resistance. But back to the formula, which is the, I know some students are not familiar with this formula only the students they they do unit four or the a level or the 13 students they may not be familiar with this formula keep in your mind here i'm dealing with a metal wire and metal wire has uh, free electrons and as a kind of a solid material so i would say the temperature increases because of the a vibrational kinetic energy. I'm not going to say it's average kinetic energy. I would say it's average vibrational kinetic energy. So when the flow of electrons as electric current passes through the wire and the lattice ions, they're already there. So we have a kind of collisions between the free electrons or the flow of electrons and the lattice ions so the particles inside or the lattice ions start to vibrate more and more and the displacement of the the lattice ions increase uh, more because of the more collisions happened so the size of the amplitude amplitude it means a maximum displacement you can you can take this point from the point of the oscillation as well when the particles they, they, they receive or the lattice via, via their lattice ions they they receive too much energy and as a result so they vibrate more and more with increase in the size of the displacement and the amplitude increases as well so here we have uh, directly proportional between the the temperature and which is directly proportional to the resistance in the metal wire the resistance again it's uh, a kind of uh, uh, how much opposes the electric current the friction between or the via the collisions between the free electrons and the lattice ions and the temperature it means the average vibrational kinetic energy of the lattice ions and as a result the amplitude increases of the lattice vibration so the correct answer is from october 2022 the graph shows how current 
various with the potential difference of V for the three components. Which of the following components is not represented by any of the three graphs? Firstly, there is a straight line passing through the origin. This one, it means that the gradient is constant, which it means that the resistance is going to be constant. So this one describing the ohmic resistor. For the curved, now the relation between the I and V becomes curved. It means that the value of resistance changes according to the change in the temperature. So this one describing the filament lamp or bulb. For the last one, it's uh, at the certain value of the voltage, it's kind of the breakdown voltage. There's a giant increase in the value of the current. And this one happened in the PN junction, which is diode. So the first one for ohmic resistor, the second one for uh, the filament lamp, and the third one for the diode. So the correct answer for this question, none of these uh, describing the negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So the correct answer for question five is C. And 2023 question six so from A level paper two. Light dependent resistors connected in a circuit as shown. This is the LDR, the light dependent resistor. The intensity of light incident on the light dependent resistor decreases. So here we go, the intensity of light decreases. It means the resistance of the light dependent resistor increases. So the voltage across the light dependent resistor is gonna be higher. So there is a larger portion of voltage across the light dependent resistor. Keep in your mind if the resistance of the light dependent resistor increases and this one added to the resistor of the fixed resistor because they are connected in series. So I would say the R total equals R1 plus R2. It means the total resistance here for the whole circuit increases. This one affects negatively on the reading of the emitter. So the reading of the emitter is going to be less and less current passing through the electric circuit. There is a less voltage across the, uh, the fixed resistor. So the voltmeter reading across the fixed resistor uh, is going to be less as well. So the correct answer for question six is A. The reading of the meter decreases and the voltmeter decreases. Question from October 2022, the graph shows how current various with the potential difference V for three components. Which of the following components is not represented by any of the three graphs? Firstly, there is a straight line passing through the origin. This one, it means that the gradient is constant, which it means that the resistance is going to be constant. So this one describing the ohmic resistor. For the curved now the relation between the I and V becomes curved. It means that the value of resistance changes according to the change in the temperature. So this one describing the filament lamp or bulb. For the last one, it's uh, at the certain value of the voltage. It's kind of the breakdown voltage. There's a giant increase in the value of the current. And this one happened in the PN junction, which is diode. So the first one for ohmic resistor, the second one for uh, the filament lamp, and the third one for the diode. So the correct answer for this question, none of these uh, describing the negative temperature coefficient thermistor so the correct answer for question five is and 2023 C. question six so from a level paper two light dependent resistors connected in a circuit as shown this is the ldr the light dependent resistor the intensity of light incident on the light dependent resistor decreases so here we go the intensity of light decreases it means the resistance 
of the lie dependent resistor increases so the voltage across the lie dependent resistor is going to be higher so there is a larger portion of voltage across the light dependent resistor keep in your mind if the resistance of the light dependent resistor increases and this one added to the resistor of the fixed resistor because they are connected in series so i would say the r total equals r1 plus r2 it means the total resistance here for the whole circuit increases this one affects negatively on the reading of the emitter so the reading of the emitter is going to be less less current passing through the electric circuit there is a less voltage across the uh, the fixed resistor so the voltmeter reading across the fixed resistor uh, is going to be less as well so the correct answer for question six is a the reading of the meter decreases and the voltmeter decreases as well. 23 the graph shows how current i varies with the potential difference v for an electrical component which component is represented by the graph there is a straight line passing through the origin from zero and there is a directly proportional between the voltage and the current so the v equals i times this is the component should be a resistance so v equals i times r according to ohm's law so resistance of a resistor at constant temperature so the correct answer is c current the potential difference graph for an ideal diode and the graph has been labeled at three separate points by the letters X and Y and Z. At which point is the resistance of this diode infinite? So it means that resistance has an infinite value. So it means the minimum current. So it might be zero. So if you look at the point X, there is no change in the value of the current. So the current equals zero at this point and for z we notice there is a value for the voltage and the y-axis there is a value for the current so z is wrong and for y we found there is a value for potential difference voltage across the diode but there is no value for the current so the current is zero as well so in this case to have a value which is infinite value of resistance the minimum current which is zero so the correct answer is true in the table shows the total resistance if two or five ohm resistors are connected in series and in parallel two five ohm resistor for parallel connection the formula is one over r total equals one over r1 plus one over r2 so one over r total equals one over five plus one over five so one over r total equals two over five r total equals five over two 2.5 ohm for the parallel for series connection the r total equals r1 plus r2 the 5 plus 5 which is 10 ohm the correct answer for question 3 is going to be d